Hey folks, this is Karen Trepti, your productivity coach, coaching you on time and money, coming to you from Guy Jean Works Coaching. Have the beautiful Catherine Lee on with me today. Really don't know her very well at all, but I just have such a, I get such a kick out of meeting these new fabulous entrepreneurs and bringing to them to you at the same time. So we're just going to dive right into it and explore another fabulous entrepreneur. So Catherine, tell us about you. Um, well, thank you for having me. I am a, what I call a transformational money catalyst. And really what that means is, you know, a lot of people talk about the importance of mindset, especially becoming, you know, as an entrepreneur, but I also work with a lot of creatives as well. But my main focus are people who are really um, building something of their own, you know, um, you know, essentially, that's why I say creative visionaries or entrepreneurs, you know, they're not working for someone else, they're, you know, they're setting their own income. And that really, deter that really comes with its own kind of challenges. And so um, I'm really, um, the work I do it really quite frankly, goes very deep. It really goes into um, what I call um, understanding what your personal money paradigm is, which is like your beliefs, and really understanding the shifts that you have to make in order to you know, create a very successful business because it does require that. Um, you know, as far as my point of view is you know, when you work for someone, it's a very different scenario, you know, working for a company or a business that has a very different setup as, you know, than that, which is, you know, creating, as I said, your own income and setting your own, you know, uh, which is limitless. But a lot of us have, you know, a lot of limiting beliefs that we're not always aware of. So it's very important to explore those things. And there's a lot that goes into that. And so... Yeah, it's a little bit deeper than, say, your classic mindset work, I, I generally say, because you have to kind of go into the root of what um, a lot of, like I said, um, you know, your earlier money programming, also around success and things like that. Fascinating. Well, we're all interested in money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and transparency i mean building an online i've had several businesses offline mm -hmm. and building an online business is very very different absolutely um, and it's certainly very different having one's own business mm -hmm. um, versus working for someone else mm -hmm. um, most people that i know of who become entrepreneurs don't go into this business because they say oh gee you know the 40 or 50 hours I was putting in with my boss was just not enough. And so I decided I would work 24 seven, work for myself, never have <laughs> any free time, never have any spare money. In fact, I'm going into debt really deeply. Exactly. So the work that you're doing is invaluable, Catherine. So how did you get into all of that? Um, definitely from a, you know, very subjective, you know, uh, experiences, you know, it's, it's based, um, well, I am first and foremost, um, an artist. I moved to New York. Um, I'm currently in Detroit visiting, but, um, I moved to New York to pursue art, which I still do. Um, but I was working in the creative freelance world and I really was, <laughs> I was just scared all the time about money. I, it just was, I mean, I live in a, one of the most expensive cities. That's very present. We're in, um, we're in San Francisco. Oh, I was just going to mean to say, you might be on top though. I don't know. We're, we're we good. Might be. <laughs> um, so uh, the thing is, is that it was just something that was um, consuming my life in so many ways. It wasn't necessarily that I didn't have money either. I think people confuse that a lot. They think, oh, were you struggling? And it's like, no, it's just all parts of it. I couldn't leave the city. I didn't visit my family for four years um, because I was terrified. I was terrified of losing clients. I was terrified of, it was just, you know, this thing where I was just anxiety ridden. I was just very uneasy. Um, I ultimately experienced panic. So that sent, you know, for a year or so. Um, and I just knew this was something that was 
following me everywhere. Everything was such a willful thing for me. And I was tired of living that way. I was like, why? It's just like always mustering up, you know, this will to do things. And I didn't want to live that way anymore. And so it really, um, yeah, it took a while to find this work. I never set out to be a coach. <laughs> um, you know, it was really something that I found years ago and it was tremendously helpful for me. And um, I started to actually help friends a lot. And then I got more proper training. Um, and I just think it's powerful. I think right now a lot of people need healing and they need more understanding, as did I, around why we are, our relationship to money, you know. And I don't think there's enough knowledge about that, you know. And we take a tremendous amount of. Um, you know, uh, what do I want to say? I think, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of self-sabotage and guilt and shame and sadness around it. And, you know, that's, I just, it makes me sad because people are really powerful. They're doing powerful things and they can be so hard on themselves because they're not making money, you know, and it takes away from that. And I think the more we have, as I said, better understanding around that, um, it would, allow us to support each other more and actually have better education and be able to address some of those things in a different way. Yeah, and our self-worth gets really tied up. In our oh, yes, Deb, absolutely. Yes. So, I mean, I say that from a personal level as a, as a mom who, mm -hmm. you know, went back to school, got my MBA, and then dropped out of that because I missed my children too much. Did it right. Care. I would, that was like my best decisions of all time. So I didn't have to give that up. That was like awesome. I was totally out of the box, totally against the grain. Like, what are you doing going to an Ivy League school and doing some graduate work and then running to daycare at home, for God's sakes. Exactly. But it was awesome. But still, you know, I mean, and there's a lot of wonderful women out there who are choosing to raise their children. Mm. And I just think there's really, there's, well, I can only speak from personal experience for me. I mean, sure. for me still, my self-worth was still tied up with, okay, these expectations that I had of myself, not really that my family had for me, that I had of myself. Sure, right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great that you're working with, with women on that. Now, tell us about you, like you said, you're an artist, so what kind of artwork do you do? Can you give us a little bit about your background? Um, I'm more in the conceptual, uh, I'm multimedia, so a lot of it is really working with, um, you know, I almost don't want to enter that <laughs> because it's its own conversation, but um, it, I only say that it, essentially that's really what brought, I've always been what I would say, having to make create businesses, you know, to support my work because, my, I don't paint, you know, painting sell very easily, very often, you know, I'm more of, like I said, conceptual. So, you know, it's being, it's understanding my situation, you know, it's like you, you know, I have to support my work, my ideas that are maybe going to require different financial support, uh, you know, from, you know, uh, collectors or whatever that may be. But even that requires, being able to have financial conversations and being confident in that, this was another aspect to it too. Being able to stand in a room and, you know, um, you know, when I do have shows in galleries, being able to have that conversation with gallerists. Uh, and I didn't feel confident years ago. And I knew this was something that I needed to represent myself. And to add to something that you were saying is that I think a lot of people – assume that money only relates to having the money and but uh, you know i have clients who are doing very well they are actually very um stressed about managing their money um or some area because i really address money um in five parts because we have a relationship to each part that's very unique you know some people are very good at earning money but they can't keep it some people um, just, uh, what do I want to say? Um, you know, they have these patterns, these cycles that can, which generally do very much relate to self-worth. And that's very hard to say to someone 
who's very successful on paper. They're high income, they're very confident, high self-esteem, but there still may be a worth issue in regards to maintaining that money. And the same is true with working with artists or creatives. They're very good at what they do, especially in New York. There are so many great art, you know, um, specialized people. But when it, money enters the conversation, it gets very uneasy. Suddenly that confidence in this one area <laughs> you know, it starts to get sensitive. And, and I understand that because, you know, it's like sending invoices or doing those things that just, you know, put you in a different mode of operation. And that's essentially what we're talking about. Yeah. So I do really like working, as I mentioned earlier, just a lot of these kind of uh, individual entrepreneurs and creatives because it's very specific kind of the challenges that I think they encounter. So are you able to give our audience, which is actually full of maybe some men, I know we have a couple of men at least, sure. mostly female entrepreneurs who are listening mm -hmm. to this. Um, what sort of, do you have any tips maybe that you could give them to start thinking? Sure. Um, you know, I would say, um, some a very something I do with all my clients. It doesn't matter really who you are. Um, I always like to start with with what I call the money map, and that is where we really look at your relationship to. Like I said, there are five kinds of money, and I say three aspects to each, and that's really understanding what your inner money programming is. And something I always ask, and I'll just say a very simple part of it is savings represents a time in your life when something um, like, you know, when you were younger, generally, um, when, you know, something was taken away or you lost something like a home, maybe a parent um, lost a job, um, some sense of security, because that's what say is security rep or excuse me, that's what savings represents is our security. And, you know, when we have savings, we feel more secure. It's also kind of a measure of time. If you lost a job, you would have that that kind of safety net, correct? So a lot of times, people who don't have a lot of savings or have a lot of apprehension around that area, that's where we'll kind of look. And so some questions I I will ask is just that. Does something come to mind? And it, don't try to overthink it, but does something come to mind, an event or, you know, that an occurrence that, um, you know, happened maybe in the first seven years of your life? It might even be, you know, first 10 years of your life. Um, and like I said, not to think about it too hard because a lot of times we try to get too uh, conscious about it, but so much happens in our subconscious mind. It'll just kind of send us a memory. And you know, you'll think, oh, that one time we had to move and I was just really sad. There was confusion around it. And um, so that's one thing I always ask. There's also, what kind of things did your parents used to say when it came to money? Um, you know. Uh, was it, and, and it could really be about having things in general. Um, it could also be, um, you know, the common things they said, like in the car, <laughs> you know, like, you know, we, money doesn't grow on trees is a common one. We hear those things, but really come up, like really consider the things that they said often, repeated often. And the next question would really be, how does that make you feel when you think about it? Like, how did that really make you feel? Because the way we relate to money is not purely through thought. Our emotions are tremendously powerful. They're actually more powerful than our thoughts. So what happens is we can tell ourselves to think a lot differently, but, uh, you know, that's why it can frustrate me because a lot of times people will talk about, you know, it's all about your thoughts. But if we have a very strong emotion, you know, if we're saying like, tell yourself you're rich or something, or tell yourself you're wealthy. If you have strong emotions that are running in you that are saying, that's not true. It's just not true. It's never going to happen to me or for me rather. Um, we really need to address that emotional side of things because that's the actual charge that creates a lot of our beliefs. You know, it really kind of, um, creates the resistance, let's say, from really um, making changes. So 
basically, I'll say this. We have a lot of thoughts in our day, thousands in fact. Many are habitual. And when they're negative and they're connected on a, you know, emotionally charged, that's, those are the things we want to pay most attention to because that's what's going to be um, really uh, dictating our actions. And so a lot of things I want to say about money is that we falsely believe that money management is all up here. It's logical, it's analytical, it's rational. But in fact, it, there's so much that um, we, when we operate with our money, it's actually a very emotional thing. A lot of financial people, my sister was a financial analyst for a very big institution, and we talk about this a lot. And she's like, it's fascinating because these people who are handling millions of dollars, their money themselves, they're having struggles. You know, there's something going on there that she was just like, I never understood it. But now, of course, we have this conversation. And, and same with my accountant. He says the same thing is that money operating with our money has nothing to do with our logic. When we're emotionally like charged, so much of that comes from our earliest paradigm from the first seven years of our life. So that's why, you know, that was just one portion of what I ask clients, and that was just concerning savings. But we go through a whole profile, you know, concerning debt, your income. Uh, we also cover other past kind of challenges that could be creating a lot of resistance in your money management. So do you find that most clients when you're first working with them are actually aware because i think it takes it's a good question takes some time to even and again everything just has to come from our own experience but right to listen to our thoughts because i know i do listen to my thoughts i know i i know i can see kind of the waves of emotion right if i get tired and I'm like oh that's you know those thoughts are a little more negative I'm not exactly sure I really want to dwell there and so let's let's do something about that so exactly yeah. well um like I said you know it's hard for me to do tips a lot of times I do get that question a lot because um I think again um, that's a bit of the distinction between mindset. I, I do make that distinction, even though a lot of times my work is put in that category, um, because I really look at mindset as just the mental. Um, and a lot of that is about framing and like, you know, writing down numbers and things like that. Whereas you're right, when I take my clients through a session, it's more about really pausing and dropping in to really let them you know, truly identify their processes that I take my clients through so that we can uncover that. It really is about uncovering a lot of those thoughts that we're not so aware of throughout the day because we're just kind of running around. <laughs> you know, we're not going, oh, conscious of like that negative thought necessarily. You actually need to kind of pause and bring awareness to it. So it does require kind of like a moment to really connect to it and have very specific questions so that you can really, like I said, uncover it. And you're right. A lot of people are like, don't even know what a money block is. You know, I mean, I bring this up to my father and he's like, what are you talking about? I mean, this is just like, you know, it can really bewilder people for very obvious reasons because um, like you said, how do you even know? Um, and what I say is, um, if you're not happy with some part of your money right now, then yes, there's something to definitely examine and not as a judgment, but certainly something to explore um, that, you know, uh, there are things, many things you can do to start. It, it is a process for sure. It's a long-term relationship that we each have. It's very personal and it's very specific. So um, yeah, there's, I'm, I'm a bit like fixated on it. I love processes that can really, um, because that's the main part of what I'm most interested in is really identifying specifically what's holding you back because the more specific you can get, the faster results you can have. 
as opposed to, I don't know if you've read any money mindset books or anything like that, a lot of them kind of say the same thing. And it can get a little, you know, they're, they're good starters, but they can get a little general sometimes. I think we can have very specific, you know, um, dialogues of our own about money. And a lot of it relates to our experiences. So, yeah, I think definitely, I mean, I'm talking to friends, it definitely relates to our experiences and it's, it, it is really fascinating how, um, the different paradigms are out there, you know, people thinking yep. just within their own framework, which is what we're dealing with, right? And even in this world, <laughs> in absolutely, business, like people are all in their, their own little ways of, not even little ways, but just individual ways of thinking yeah. about things. Exactly. So fascinating, Catherine. Really happy. Yes, it is. <laughs> sharing that with us now. How are people going to find you if this is something that they want to pursue with you? Yeah, um, my uh, website is radicalpathway.com. And you can also find me on Facebook at um, Catherine Lee is my name. And, um, you know, all social media, same name, Catherine Lee. Um, but, you know, I do encourage people to, you know, reach out to me. I do do something called the money map, which is always, if you are curious, it's a fantastic thing to go through. Um, to really learn and explore yourself. Um, I, I always get comments like, wow, I had no idea. And that's really what this is about. Um, I think a lot of people, to, if I may say, uh, I have a bit of a mission. I really want to break through this taboo around money because I think it's just this thing that I, we just need to have more understanding, you know, um, learn more, and then we can really start healing. There's so much healing that we can do when I started healing my money, you know, which is still an ongoing process as you grow, you grow your business, you have to kind of, <laughs> you're, you're learning a lot about yourself. There's a talk about self-development, but, um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, having a way to navigate it, it's not about being over it, you know, like, okay, here I am. It's more about having tools of, a, just being able to identify what's going on so that you're not um, getting swept up in it because that's what happens. We get terrified, we go into fight or flight mode, and then we start reacting and we get caught in these patterns. So the more we can identify and step out of it, and actually I teach, I do use EFT, which is emotional freedom technique to help people work through those blocks. That That's also helps. For people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I never know which way to say that's more better for people to understand. But uh, yes. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, well, I'm definitely with you. I mean, my mission is all about family A to family B. So that's excellent. Another time, another <laughs> place. This is about putting the spotlight on you. But certainly, um, I mean, I've seen people who... It's, it's very interesting to me. It's fascinating. People who just don't even want to have a conversation about money, like no, mm -hmm. not something they're even interested in. I mean, oh my gosh, I love money. Like, how can you not want to even have a conversation about money when it's like, I mean, we are here. I'm a spiritual being too. Oh yeah, I agree. Me too. That. But we do live on earth at this moment in time. So I think it's really important to know about money. It's important to know how to, how to handle all those things that keep us grounded. Yeah. And if we can be grounded like that, then it gives us the luxury, really, unless you're going to go live in the Himalayan cave somewhere. Right. Um, you know, of being able to have the luxury of both. So I agree. I Contemporary agree. society, we have to understand it, you know, unfortunately. So I'm going to let you go, yeah. but this has been fabulous. And I do so appreciate you and your time that you've taken to give to me and to our audience, Catherine. Yeah, um, thank you. I'll go ahead and put links down below too, once we publish this, so people will know where to contact you. Thank so, you. You're welcome. So until next time, folks, coaching on time and money, your productivity coach. Karen Trepti from Gaijin Works.
coaching, sending you tons of light and love. Until next time.